This video is sponsored by Change Checker, and once again they're giving away 10 of the brand new Iguanodon coins. All you have to do is find the golden Iguanodon hidden somewhere in the video, and comment the timestamp to be in with a chance of winning. Good luck! Last week saw the release of the UK's new Iguanodon 50 pence coin, the second in the new Dinosauria trilogy. And whilst for the first coin I visited a load of old bones in the Natural History Museum, this time I thought I'd try and bring them back to life. You see, there's this really cool type of photography in which toys are photographed in creative ways to make them appear real. And I wanted to do this with the dinosaurs. The plan was to take four photographs of four different dinosaurs. And to make things more interesting, I'd be using the classical elements as themes. Earth, wind, water and fire. Plus, I'd only be using my phone camera, because I don't really know all that much about actual photography. And as always, I'd be on the lookout for what other cool designs I could find along the way. This first shot would be by far the most basic, with just a toy iguanodon and a can of compressed air, the stuff normally used to clean electronics. So I've come down to Hawley Woods, which is actually where they filmed a lot of the most recent Jurassic World film. And spoiler warning in case you haven't seen it, but right at the end all of the dinosaurs escape into this woods. For some reason these deer don't seem too alarmed. Now iguanodons were naturally found in swamplands, along coastlines, or in woodland like this. So I was looking for a log or fallen tree or something to take a really nice and natural looking photograph. If I can just get him to stay upright, there we go. This is where the compressed air comes in. By spraying some behind and around the dinosaur, I could create a subtle mist effect, adding a sort of cinematic quality to the shot. My phone camera was shooting continuously, taking 10 photos a second, and hopefully there'd be at least one good photo somewhere in there. There was. I repeated the process in a few more locations, experimenting with sunlight and angles to give me a few different options, but this one is most definitely my favourite. The next photo, however, would be considerably more challenging. In its simplest form, I wanted to photograph a pterodactyl in flight, silhouetted against the moon. I headed down to my local garden centre to find everything else I'd need. I bought some small plants with unusually shaped leaves, some really cool looking large rocks, a mist machine for indoor fountains, some thin nylon wire, and a multi-pack of tiny dinosaur figures which they for some reason sold, and I didn't get a single interesting coin in my change. So I've got the most completely over the top setup for this shot. The basic idea is to have a pterodactyl silhouetted against the moon, but then to make things more interesting I've put the rocks in the foreground and some lava rocks as well. The plants with the weird leaves, they're going to be on either side and hopefully catch some of the light themselves. This here is the mist machine, this weird device, and it's got to be submerged in water. Let me just plug it in to demonstrate. There we go, so immediately it started misting. That looks better than I thought. I added a plank of wood across the top, from which the pterodactyl would be suspended using the nylon wire, and the bowl of water would sit up there too, with the mist trailing down and hopefully shrouding the entire setup. So this is where I'm at so far, I've put all the rocks in, I've put the plants in, I'm not sure if this one's going to be visible, but the two really cool ones are, and this is what the camera's seeing. So obviously remember the lights are all going to be off, you're not going to be able to see any of the background. I'm thinking in terms of the dinosaur for the foreground to go for one of these. I think it's a Brachiosaurus, but I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to make it too crowded. So I might end up getting rid of him if there's not enough space anyway. How's that? With the pterodactyl in position, I was really pleased with the overall setup. But like I thought, the Brachiosaurus had to go. Sorry, bird. All that was left was to set up the mist machine. And then it was time to turn out the lights. And it looked incredible. All in all, I was delighted with this shot. Next it was from the skies and into the oceans. The plan was to shoot a Plesiosaurus underwater. Again I'd be filming it indoors, inside a small plastic fish tank for much more control. I bought the fish tank from a pet shop, plus some gravel for the bottom and some aquatic plants. Look at that, there's these tiny albino frogs at the front and this really big non-albino one at the back. And here I finally had some luck with my change. Ah, that's Paddington by St Paul's. 
The Paddington coin was the same one as I found in the snowman video a few months back, and using the find a coin function on the change checker website, I could learn more about the Benjamin Bunny coin. With 25 million of them minted, it's far from the rarest coin, but I guess it beats finding nothing. So the first thing I'm going to do is line the outside of the tank with blue card as a background. I filled it two thirds with water, rinsed off and added the stones, and then topped the tank up. So now I'm going to add the plants, and true story, years ago I had a pet crab, and I'd buy him loads of plants like this to make his tank look nice, but then he'd just go around and snip them all off within minutes of me putting them in. Luckily for me, plesiosauruses are carnivores, so these plants should be safe, I just might have to watch my fingers. I tied two bits of nylon string around his front and back, and then lowered him into the water like some kind of aquatic puppet. Now that everything was set up, it was just a question of lighting, and it was very much trial and error. I turned the LED lighting in my room to blue, and used a torch on an old phone to shine through the holes in the tank's lid, creating these really cool rays of light. The main problem I wanted to avoid was the setup looking too much like an aquarium, and this is where the lighting was really important. But the other problem I hadn't anticipated was bubbles, everywhere. You can wipe the surface to get rid of them, but they just kept coming back, and they were on everything. On the front and back of the tank, on the plants, and on the plesiosaurus itself. My solution was a lazy one. Take two days off to watch Netflix and eat pizza, and let the bubbles disappear naturally by themselves. It worked. Once again, I used the old phone torch to create light rays, and then experimented moving it around whilst my current phone continuously took photos. And my laziness, or as I prefer to call it, patience, had paid off. So this would be the grand finale. I'd be using everyone's favourite dinosaur, a T-Rex, and the idea was to make a sort of volcano-style backdrop, with rocks and fire everywhere. I'd be using the big rocks and smaller lava rocks from the pterodactyl photo, and went to the hardware shop to buy some fire lighters and a fire extinguisher, because I'm a responsible adult. And this time, I found a cool £2 design in my change, commemorating the 400th anniversary of the King James Bible. So this is the basic setup. I've got a couple of cool rocks, the T-Rex in front. I've got this old table upturned just as a kind of background. You can still see both the edges, but I can work with that. And then Ralph came over to see what all the commotion was about. Hey, Ralph. I scattered the lava rocks all around the scene to make it look more like a volcanic hotspot and less like my garden patio. Next, it was the fire lighters. Now just a single square is sufficient to start a barbecue, but I'd be using the entire pack. And with all the elements ready and in position, it was time to light the fire. I had Danielle to help, and she'd be in charge of the fire extinguisher in case anything went wrong, just so I could focus on the photo itself, and not have to worry about accidentally setting the garden ablaze. It goes without saying, but please, please, please don't try this at home. And it looked amazing. I never expected it to look this good, or nearly this apocalyptic. I'm slightly worried that his tail's gonna start melting. I adjusted his angle slightly, just to make the shot a bit more head-on, and once again the camera took pictures continuously, whilst I didn't really do a lot. Surprisingly, this was probably the easiest photo out of them all. There was no real trial and error, it just looked great straight away. So I think we're done. Ah, oh, here's a bit bendy, that's not too bad. I put the fire out with the hose, saving the extinguisher for another time. So there we go, earth, wind, water and fire. My favourite was probably the pterodactyl photo, although my phone camera definitely struggled with the two darker shots. It did a pretty good job with the T-Rex and Iguanodon photos though, and hopefully it's shown you how easy and accessible toy photography can be. I also want to give a huge shout out to the Instagram page Prehistoric Pat, who introduced me to this subject and inspired me to try it for myself. As for the Iguanodon coin, you can get your very own from the Change Checker website, linked in the description, for only £4.50 plus postage and packaging. They also have everything you need to get started coin collecting, including coin albums to store your finds, and the free to use Find a Coin tool. Remember to comment the timestamp if you manage to spot the golden Iguanodon, and 10 winners will be randomly selected in 7 days. A massive congratulations to the winners from last month's giveaway, and if you haven't already done so, please email info at changechecker.org to claim your coin.